Hi guys, how are you doing? So for today's video, I'm just gonna go ahead and review how to take a manual blood pressure. So I do have my patient here. A few things to know before you do take a manual blood pressure. You kinda wanna know a little bit about the patient history. Also, you wanna know, do the patient has a continuous pulse socks on because that could interfere with the oxygen level that you're receiving from the pulse socks. You also wanna make sure that you are also looking at the nature of the patient's skin. We wanna avoid any arms with maybe like IVs and lines or any contraindications like patients that are dialysis. So you really wanna make sure that you're looking out for these things before you do a manual blood pressure on a certain site, okay? So I do have my patient here. Um, I already know what she normally runs. She's not normally hypertensive. History is really good, so that way we can kind of know when we should be alerted for a specific number because we treat patients, not really machines, all right? So what I'm going to have on hand, I have my hand sanitizer, making sure that we're doing hand hygiene. I do have my gloves. I already told my patient exactly what I'm going to be doing on her, so she already knows. I already identified my patient. So I did some hand hygiene. How are you feeling today? Good. All right, I already know assessed her for pain, all of that stuff because there's so many things that can affect the patient's blood pressure level. So it's really important just to make sure that we do also have the right size cuff on the patient as well. And we know exactly where um, the brachial pulse is. We really wanna make sure that when you are putting on the cuff that it's not too tight and it's also not too loose on the patient as well. So we have that here. Before we even um, take the full blood pressure, what we like to do is to assess what we call the systolic pressure. That really helps us to know exactly how far up we have to go when we are taking the actual blood pressure. So what I'm going to do, I'm not gonna need my stethoscope yet. I'm going to go ahead and identify the radial pulse. So once I have her radial pulse, I am gonna go ahead, take my sphygmometer, make sure that it is ready to be pumped. Go. So I am increasing, pumping, Once I stop feeling her pulse, this is going to be um, the number that I keep. So let's say I stop feeling her pulse at 100. So I'm going to have to go above that by 30 mmHg. So I know that once I do her uh, full blood pressure, I'm going to pump as high as 130. That is really important because sometimes we're pumping and pumping and pumping and pumping. It's good to have that systolic um, number so that way we're not over pumping the patient, okay? So we already know that I'm going to be pumping her at 130 when I do the blood pressure. So now I'm gonna go ahead and take her actual blood pressure. Make sure that I'm putting my stethoscope where I did feel her brachial pulse. Now I'm just going to make sure that I'm paying attention to here because the systolic pressure is going to be um, when I first hear the, the sound, and when I remove pressure and I stop hearing the sound, then that's going to be really what my diastolic pressure is, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and pump. I'm pumping up all the way to 130, because that's what I got. So I pump to 130. Slowly release some pressure. So I let it out. With my patient here, I start hearing the sound back at around 110. So 110 will be my systolic pressure and I completely stopped um, hearing her pulse at around 75. 
So with someone like that, her blood pressure will be 110 over 75. So that would be the number that you will be recording. Thank you guys.